My name's. <laughs> Can you hold the straight face? Hold on a second. Okay. My name's Brad Brooks, I'm an Aquarius, and I like to kill elk. Is that good? <laughs> My name's Andrew, and I'm a Sagittarius, and I like to walk around sounding like cow elk. Real good. <laughs> uh, we want to do take two. Okay. My name's Andrew, and I'm a Sagittarius, looking to mingle with cow elk. And bull elk. I'll try, I'll try that again. Hi, my name's Brad. I'm an Aquarius, and I like to hit. <laughs> take, take, <laughs> take 15. Hi, my name is Brad, and I'm Aquarius, and I like to hunt elk. What do you think of the country so far? I think there are possibly elk. If you were to like, like tell somebody who's never been to elk hunting before, like, oh, like get trying to paint them a picture of elk country, like, pretty much I feel like this is like the quintessential picture you would try and want to paint them. Like Aspen, Meadows. Every photo, every yeah, old exactly. picture, painting yeah, you saw totally. was a country like this. Yeah. And I don't think I've ever really hunted elk just hunting before I like this, so. Most people know of Yellowstone National Park, but the surrounding wildlands are just as important to this iconic landscape, and you won't find any park rangers or tourists, just big mountains and lots of wilderness. At 18 million acres, the greater Yellowstone country is the biggest wild landscape in the continental US. It is a region rich in history. This place is also the hunting ground for 26 native tribes, including the Crow, Bannock, Blackfeet, Shoshone, and Nez Perce, all of whom were forcibly removed from the region by the U.S. Cavalry in the late 1800s. You doing, Andrew? Doing a gear repair or lost or stolen gear repair. I am uh, being a, a minimalist. 
I felt that my spoon was slightly too heavy. So I decided to pick one up in the woods when I got here. Yeah. I could be going for Boy Scout of the Year too. Yes, this is going to be one amazing spoon. I forgot my toothbrush. What are you We're on a 10-day trip and I don't have a toothbrush. Can you use mine? Yes. You cool with that? Yeah. You can buy a <laughs> <laughs> After this I won't pay you. <laughs> I'll pay you a hundred dollars for your toothbrush. I don't want to kill a bull in this basin. Too far in for you? No, no. Just that if I, uh, if I don't get back to my spot, I don't have a reason to hike clear back where I killed my bull last year. I won't be able to pick up that other antler. Oh, so are you like? Well, are you seriously not planning on trying to kill something here? Brought my bow, Brad. Oh. I thought you were just bringing that just for show. Yeah, for advertising. We were pushing up that ridge, and I could like hear some branches breaking. on squirrels really loud. I wasn't sure if it was squirrels or the elk. So we took like two steps, and then I saw him. He just came was running down that ridge. And he must have caught just a glimpse of movement, because all of a sudden he just like boom, stops. And he's looking at us, but he, like from my angle, like he couldn't see me. So I just froze, and, uh, and then he kind of took a few steps, he bugled again, he started going like, <laughs> Oh, There are times where I'm hunting and I have this thought where like, I'm like, you probably shouldn't be doing this, 
but I haven't had that feeling in a while. I like definitely today I was like, you probably should be really thoughtful about how far away you are if you're killing elk, if you're killing elk. Because it's such big country and the mountains are pretty steep. The nice thing about being this far back is that yeah, you don't have other people running around. And the animals are out where they should be, for the most part, behaving how they should be. And you'd be patient and play a strategic game with them instead of having to cover country, cover country, just to find a responsible and then try and beagle men. So if somebody wanted to backpack in here like us, they'd have to put in the same Someone was effort. stupid enough to come this far back here. Yeah. Yeah, they'd have to put in effort to get here. Yeah. So we're up high now though. So I'm thinking like, we're gonna stay up here, see if we can't spot something in the mm -hmm. evening, make a play on them. Swing and a miss. <laughs> Well, it's been a little bit of a slow morning. We've had a few bugles, but not much, and really pretty much nothing responding to our calls yet today. So I've been trying to figure out a little bit of a game plan here. It's like 10 o'clock, so I think what we're gonna do is just make a giant loop, try and go see if we can't find one bedded, and uh, get somebody to play ball with us. So we're gonna make a big loop cover a couple of different basins. See what we can find. <clears throat> Which is funny, man, because like yesterday was pretty good. Like the first elk we really got close, came right in. And uh, I only mildly regret not shooting that elk right now. But uh, we'll find something else. It's just like, man, no idea what's going on, but it's just quiet today. up a hitchhiker. Little, little buddy wanted to ride. He's having a hard time. A little cold for him. It's a little cold. But he should be. Able. I'll give him a ride for a little while. This is probably the most. 
most exciting thing that's happened all day so far. As soon as Andrew bugle got a bugle back, and all of a sudden his cows, he rounded up his cow. We are hunting in the heart of grizzly country, which keeps you on your toes at all hours of the day. I've never hunted in grizzly country before. And it definitely, like, there's, an, there's a, I like it. I like that they're here. But there's an element of, it's complicated, right? It's like, you don't, usually don't have to think about, is something gonna kill you? My opinion is that it's part of the natural current ecosystem, just like wolves, because we're incredibly intimidated by them doesn't mean that they don't belong here. Yeah, if they're pissed off or you catch them in the wrong scenario, they're gonna respond just like they've done for thousands of years, which defending a kill, yeah, you're dead or close to it, mauled, whatever. Defending their young, Grizzlies were nearly once extirpated from this region and from the entirety of the United States. But thanks to conservation efforts, grizzly bears from Yellowstone are recovering and expanding to places they haven't been seen in over a hundred years. How are you feeling about today? We'll see. <laughs> Yesterday I was all amped up because it was really brisk. We got a hard frost and everything turned completely off. So today's a new day, though. It's a new day. I think yesterday was a lull. We did get we did get into we got really close to one yeah. one bull. We, we never saw him. A lazy well, I bull. Saw his, I saw his butt running through the timber uh -huh. when he was pushing his cows away from us. Yeah, but we were like 60 yards from him. Uh -huh. Um, I also should say that, like, if you're all wondering why I'm always the one with my bow and Andrew isn't, 
because Andrew is a better caller. <laughs> <laughs> he insi- <laughs> that also. But Andrew is insisting that we ch- we spend at least a few days trying to uh, get me a bull first, even though I've tried to resist. Andrew's very forceful. Yeah. So anyways. he wants to swap it back and forth, but I think it's more consistent, more. Uh advantageous if one person can build on their experiences and failures or whatever blah blah get, blah to to get <laughs> all right fine I professor want, want to, to go back over here i want to kill you an elk too no i think it's just that uh if you keep swapping turns it's like right when you start getting in the zone you yeah pull it's out like of it. it's so. kind of like when it's like you know in like sports when you like just start, you get into the game mm-hmm. and you're starting and to like get into the flow down. and then you're like subbed yeah. out and you're like, damn, Fuck, I'm just yeah. getting in my flow. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's go kill an elk. All right, sounds good. Nux? Nux. Nux, all right. Job going there. I can see his antlers. He was only like, I don't know, 15 yards from me. But I could, he was just over the edge there when he stopped. So, that's a bummer. That was a good setup. There were like two bulls coming at each other. They both had cows. And that cow calf just decided they had to come run and check us out. Yellowstone is quintessential elk country. Sagebrush, aspens, big mountains, and thousands of square miles of unroaded wild landscape. All of the predators and big game that were here hundreds of years ago are still present, 
which makes this place rare and unique, not only in America, but in the world. In the early 1900s, more than 26,000 head of elk from Yellowstone were put on rail cars and shipped around the country to states like Pennsylvania, Alabama, Kentucky, and Utah to repopulate elk herds after they were nearly hunted to extinction. Yellowstone is quite literally the calving grounds for our modern day elk population. If you leave something alone, it amazes me how rich it can be, both in vegetation and, and wildlife. And it kind of manages itself, I mean, except for, for us being out here trying to harvest an elk, it kind of does its own thing. Slow morning. I haven't heard a single bugle yet, which is crazy. We've seen two bulls off in the distance. One, which was way, way, way far away. And he was definitely, he was pushing a cow and bugling, but we just couldn't hear him because he's so far away. I think about moving to a slightly different spot today. See if we can't find something a little bit more active. The protection of Yellowstone in 1872 was the first time as a nation we recognized the value of protecting a place permanently for future generations. It was difficult, messy, and involved brutally removing the native tribes that lived here. But it also set the stage for our modern day system of public lands, which today provides over 640 million acres of publicly owned and accessible land. up into a new area today so it's just me now and just gone doing his own thing and uh, cooler out today I have no idea what to expect up here we've never been here before this is totally uh, going in kind of blind but uh, it looks pretty good on maps and doesn't look like there's anybody else around so we're gonna pack in we got a couple days here and uh, see if we can't scratch up one elk I think at this point in time, all we need is one elk that wants to play ball.
I was starting to make me nervous there. I was like, son of a gun, yeah, nothing. I just heard a distant bugle up this drainage. At least one, maybe two. Did you hear two? Okay. There are elk here, that's good. <laughs> Last morning, we are uh, in a little, a little tough to find smell. So we're going into slightly new drainage, and we're gonna put in a big day and do our best to find smell. But uh, I think there's probably some sports analogy you could insert here, but I don't know what that would be. But we've got one more chance to find an elk today. So. We cannot say that we have not pounded the ground. I think at this point, I was trying to add up the miles we put in over the last, what, like six days, seven days? And it's a lot. Every single day, we've seen a bull or herd, at least one bull. So if we keep that trend going today, uh, at least we got a shot at doing something. Well, that almost turned out to be something, but didn't work out. I just feel like this has been a trip where it's been tough to kind of just catch a break. We've been working that hillside, working that whole mountain. Finally found a good, fresh sign. Stumble out of the woods and uh, just randomly hear a cow call. Turns out we run into a herd of elk. And I tried calling him up, didn't work. 
and they kind of work their way into, up into the timber. And we got down to the bottom, all of a sudden that bull, I see that bull running. I don't know what happened, if he came back, check on me or what, but it's just one of those trips, man, where it's just like Murphy's Law right now for elk hunting, but it's easy to like kind of get disappointed. But at the same time, I just feel like I'm so lucky to be able to get out and even have that kind of experience. been a really fun trip and really incredible country and I'm just fortunate to be able to have that experience.